for this next one, we're actually going to find a confidence interval. So one of the most important things with confidence intervals is to figure out which type of confidence interval it is, because that makes a big difference in which formulas you're going to use. So this one, you're trying to find a confidence interval for a population proportion. So that means we want to use all the formulas that have to do with proportions. For our margin of error, for this one, we have our critical value. Then we have the p hat times the 1 minus p hat divided by the sample size. Now this one, it wasn't even nice enough to give you the p hat. You have to figure that out too. So if they don't give you a percentage or a proportion for the p hat, you can figure it out by doing the number of successes over the sample size. So in this one, our number of successes was 297. Our p hat is going to be 297 over 400, which is in decimal 0.7425. And this one, it wants a 90% confidence interval. To get our critical value, I'm going to go back to those three that we had written down. So for a 90% confidence interval, the critical value is 1.645. That saves me quite a bit of time of having to try and figure that out. Okay, so then I'm putting in 0.7425, 1 minus 0.7425, and dividing by 400. Be really careful putting this in your calculator because the 400 has to go under the square root as well as the rest of it. 1.645. You notice how I have one more set of parentheses after the 400. That way my 400 is inside the square root. There's my margin of error. I'm going to round that to three decimal places, so that's going to be 0 0.036. Now I can find my confidence interval. I'm going to have my sample proportion minus my margin of error, and then my sample proportion plus my margin of error. So this is going to be that 0.7425 minus the 0 0.036. This one is the 0.7425 plus the 0 0.036. That gives me 0.7065 and 0.7785 for this one. So there's my confidence interval. For the next one, it's saying that they're going to do another survey, but they want to know what minimum sample size they need to use. There are also two different formulas depending on if you have a prior estimate or not. And this one is saying that you do have a prior estimate for p hat. We're going to use the one from the previous survey. So that means that our prior estimate is 0.7425. The formula, if you do have a prior estimate, is you take your critical value and square it, and then you have your prior estimate and one minus your prior estimate, and that's all over your margin of error squared. So we can plug these things in. Our critical value is 1.645, just like it was up here since it's a 90% confidence level. We're going to plug in 0 0.74, 0 0.7425 for our P star. For the margin of error, it says three percentage points. This is 3%, but you have to change this to a decimal. If you're talking about anything with proportions, you can't use percentages. You have to use decimals. So we want to change that to 0 0.03 squared. So I come up with 574.9. For minimum sample size problems, you always have to round up to the next whole number. So that's going to round up to 575. So that's my minimum sample size. Now if I'm doing the same thing, but there's no prior estimate for the sample proportion, then my formula, Instead of these two things here, I just have a 0.25. So this formula is actually a little bit easier. So this one gives me 751.7. I'm going to round that 
up to 752. Now I'm finding a confidence interval for a mean. So again, you want to read through the problem and make sure that you know which um, thing you're trying to find a confidence interval for so that you get the right formula. So for a mean, the formula for the margin of error looks like this. So we're going to have to find our critical value using the inverse t function. The s is the standard deviation. So this is the s and the n is the sample size. So our sample size is 41. So we have s is 15.4 the n is 41. All right, so let's find our critical value. We want a 95% confidence interval, so that means our alpha is 5%. Alpha over 2 is going to be 0 0.025 in decimal. And then for our inverse t distribution, we need the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. So we'll have 40 degrees of freedom. Okay, so I'm doing inverse t. My area is 0 0.025. My degrees of freedom is 40. So that gives me negative 2.02. .02. I'm just going to take off the negative. So that means my t alpha over 2 is 2.02. .02. So I'm going to plug these three numbers into this formula and just plug that into my calculator. That gives me 4.9. This is my margin of error. For my confidence interval, I want to take my point estimate, which is my sample mean. So I want to take my sample mean minus the margin of error and then my sample mean plus the margin of error. So that's going to be 193 minus 4.9 and 193 plus 4.9, which gives me 188.1 and 197.9. So that's my, my confidence interval. Then with this one, they're planning a new study and they're trying to figure out how many eggs have to be tested. So what this is asking for is a minimum sample size. And kind of keep in mind on these problems, if it doesn't give you a sample size, but it's talking about a, um, a confidence level and so on, then it's probably asking you to find the minimum sample size. And since this has to do with a mean, then the formula the sigma star is a prior estimate or an estimate for the standard deviation. So in this one, they tell you um, to use the previous study to estimate the sigma. So in that one, our S was 15.4. So we're going to use 15.4 for our estimate for the standard deviation. This one, we have, this one, it has a Z instead of a T. Since this is 95%, we've got that critical value already. If we go back to our list of critical values, that one is 1.96. And then the E that we want, it says estimate to within 3 milligrams. So that's telling you to use 3 for E. And this one, since we're not talking about proportions, we don't change this to a decimal. This is already the value that we want it to be. So we're just going to use 3 as E. So that means our formula, we have the 1.96 here times the 15.4 divided by 3, and then that entire thing gets squared. We get 101.2. Again, we're going to round this up. So we're going to round it up to 102. So that's our minimum sample size. Okay, last question is to find a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation for the chicken eggs. So this time with the standard deviation, we have another different set of formulas. This one, we don't even have the margin of error. We just have these, this one big complicated formula. 
So this one we have n minus 1 times s squared over, and I can never remember which, which um, one goes on which side, but it doesn't really matter. So these two parts of this one are the same in both places. The only difference between these two is that use the two different critical values. So you have to find your two different critical values from chi squared um, to get this one started. So we're going to use our original sample size of 41. So that's the n. Our standard deviation was 15.4. So that's our s. And now we have to find our two critical values. So for this one, we're looking at 95% confidence. That means that our alpha is 5% or 0.05. The alpha over 2 is going to be 0.025. And our degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so that's going to be 40. So this is using the solver again. So I'm going to put in 40 for my degrees of freedom here. I'm going to do the alpha over 2 first, so I'm going to put 0.025 here. And then don't forget, every time you do this, you have to do the alpha and the enter button to get it to recalculate. So we get one critical value of 24.43. And then I'm going to do this over. I'm just going to change this number over here to 1 minus alpha over 2. So 1 minus alpha over 2 is 1 minus 0.025, which is going to be 0.975. Recalculating again, so that's 59.34. So these are my critical values. So now I'm going to plug everything into these two formulas. 41 minus 1 times 15.4 squared. And again, it doesn't really matter which side you do these on. Just when you get ready to say what your confidence interval is, just put the smaller of your two results first. So I'm going to put the 24.43 here and calculate that out. So I get 19.7. And then I'm going to do this one again just with a different critical value down there. So I'm using my other critical value which was 59.34. So for that one I get 12.6. Okay, so this is actually the smaller one. So when I write my confidence interval, I'm going to write it as, I'm going to put the 12.6 first, and then the 19.7. So there's my confidence interval for the standard deviation. And for these, the, um, your sample standard deviation, your point estimate, isn't usually in exactly the middle between these two, but it should be somewhere in between these two. So if you look at our um, sample standard deviation up here, 15.4, it is in this interval. That's one way that you can know that you got your values correct. If you um, did something wrong down here, then your interval may be a long ways away from your sample standard deviation. And that way you know that's not right.